craziest stuff you have ever done in a game. Make sure to note system, game, and any house rules in play that contributed to the epicness. Look, this card's from 2010. Don't judge them too much. Epicness I know. so I know. totally epic. I know, I know. It <laughs> makes me cringe as well. But it was a different time of the internet, all right? It's when people all wore those sunglasses that were plastic with the, like, the candy oh, glasses. Oh, not them. You know, oh, no, no Megan, don't even remind me about it. <laughs> with epic written across them. Ugh. Remember that phase everyone went through where everything was covered in bacon? Or, no, you remember the bit where everything had a moustache on it? Everything had oh a moustache. Oh my god, that was cringe. <laughs> like, this, like, when this video's not, not about that, let's just keep going. Alright, sorry about that, guys. Game. Shadowrun 4th Edition. So we failed our plans A and B to retrieve the Johnson's MacGuffin. Our last shot was to ram the target's armoured tank limousine and hope that our GM bulldog could stop it. So we did. Luckily for us, the DM totally fucked up the vehicle damage rules. Our little GM bulldog hit the thing square in the side, banana bent the fucker, and threw it a hundred meters, where it crashed irreparably. Irrep- it got fucking rode off. <laughs> yeah, it got rode off. It's not me. It's not me. It's not making a three yeah. MOT this year, right? <laughs> Our bulldog flipped over and landed undamaged on the other side of the limo, on its tires. Shit got really cash art cash. Is that a term? That wasn't very cash money of you. Do you not remember that meme? It was like, cash it was, money? Like, Megan, it, like, <laughs> it was a long time ago, okay? Don't, don't judge them too harshly. Okay. Shit got really cash hours later when the DM remembered he didn't do the damage properly for our vehicle and realised we should all have been red paced. Well. But like, you weren't because he forgot. Yeah. So. yeah no taxi backsies. <laughs> oh god, where to start? Okay, I've got one that really stands out. D&D 3.5 edition. The party were in a dungeon, and after solving a puzzle while endless hordes of monsters attacked us, we were rewarded with an ancient sword that just so happened to be cursed. By this point, the druid and the barbarian were both unconscious, so the wizard being nearest to the sword used it to hit one of the monsters. The sword's effect turned out to be that it instantly killed the victim. Based. <laughs> But yeah, look, look, maybe, maybe in ten years' time we'll be looking back and oh, me beast! Oh, remember whenever we have yeah, beast will always be beast. <laughs> beast is too much of a fun word. <laughs> so it instantly killed the victim, but the user had to make a fortitude save or go into minus one health. Ooh, ooh, that's an interesting one. This put the wizard into unconsciousness. So my dwarf cleric, by the name of Axebeard Ironhammer, <laughs> runs over to the wizard with one spell slot still unused. Then picks up the sword, hits an enemy with it, rolls seven on his fort save, and promptly falls unconscious. My greatest failure. (laughs) System, Cyberpunk 2020. Black Ops vs Black Ops campaign. House rules. No rare weapons. Limited by encumbrance. I.e. if it fits in a vest, cool. If you need a wheelbarrow, no. We're pinned down, taking heavy fire from the goons we've just raided. We've blasted their research team into warm red paste and are stomping their hard drives with magnetic boots and iron fillings. We've rocketed their off-site data storage sites with a team-purchased artillery strike. Yay, nomads with heavy weapons. But it isn't helping us escape. I peek around the corner with a gun cam, see the offensive charge about to take place, and make a strategic move. I rammed into a wall, shoulder first, crashing into the next room. Repeat until I'm two rooms over, six rooms past them. I come up behind them as they're advancing. Going to stealthy mode. Yeah, you can't go stealthy mode when you're when just, you're banging wait, wait, through wait, fucking walls. You're just banging through what six walls. It's like stealthy and nobody mode. fucking realizes. Yeah. Bring up my only remaining weapon, which can pop their armor. The gun I affectionately call the coffin filler. Edge. Oh, it's a heavily modified street sweeper of a submachine gun with an obnoxious rate of fire, heavily illegal ammunition, and internal suppressor. So I take aim. Fire into the floor they're standing on. Wreck it shit entirely. The assault team falls down. I call out to the team. And we unloaded everything we had into their kitten pile of bodies. And one of them fires off a rifle grenade. My response? I want to bap it back down after them with my cyber hand. Wait, is this guy Inspector Gadget with a tennis racket <laughs> hand or what? Yeah. DM blinks. Uh, roll for it. Roll less than a dice are rolled. Ref plus athletics plus dice roll equals 43. DM groans. It lands amongst them. Detonating. I'll roll damage. I point to a line in the book. Point blank damage is automatically the maximum. He consults his text. Finds their ammo type. 
high explosive frags. Trophy is not PG. <laughs> <laughs> Trophy Oh my god. The V traumas for this time. Oh the many countless hours spent on new grounds. Oh, oh. It was a different time, guys, okay? <laughs> just don't try and judge us too harshly. It was just it was a cool thing back then, alright? Trust me, it actually was. It wasn't always was cringe. It? Back then. Like it was like you remember that like a week whenever the heart of sheep was actually kind of funny, and then after that it was like oh my god, it's actually fucking stuff. This is actually... It's whenever the parents all get involved uh, with the heart of sheep. It's like, like <laughs> look at us kids. Or do you remember? Oh no, you know what was big about this Gangnam time as well? Stuff. Yes, yeah, that was a big thing. Oh, I think this thread's more about horrible, not nostalgia, but old internet cringe flashbacks that I don't ever want to have. <laughs> yeah, like we'll keep going. D and D three point five custom flight rules. We'll elaborate further. So basically, this mad scientist equivalent had sent two of us off to steal a giant owl egg for one of his experiments. So we trek through a forest to some cliffs where we know a bunch of them are nesting. Sounds like he's gonna make some KFC. <laughs> We're standing at the bottom trying to work out the best way to steal an egg without waking them up. Since it's the day, they're all sleeping. In the end we decide to just both fly up, grab an egg each and hightail it and hope that we're gone before they wake up and work out what's going on. Now the way the flight system works is basically we have 5 minutes of flight, after which we can glide if we pass fairly difficult checks. Just before we do this, I make a knowledge check to see what I can find out about giant owls. The DM pulls out the monster manual, flips to the right page and chuckles. Giant owls hate having their nests raided. I don't think any animal <laughs> exactly. likes, likes to get their nests raided. <laughs> we're like, oh shit! But since we had no choice, we just went for it anyway. So we both launch up, make a grab for an egg. I managed to grab one, but the other guy rolled a one and punched the sleeping owl in the face. Fuck. Oh. <laughs> the thing gives a loud hoot and then sees me holding an egg and goes nuts, hooting even more. I'm like, fuck this, I'm out of here and hightail it. I look behind me and there's 12 of the bastards chasing me. And by this point, we only had four minutes of flight left. So we figure we'd take the risk, try to fly through the forest, so the moment we spot a clearing, we dive into it and are now basically flying through the forest at breakneck speed. Well, 60 feet round, madly dodging trees. A few of the aisles followed but didn't get far and we were able to hide until the rest of them left. That's not bad going What on. I don't understand is if they were on a cliff, why didn't they just dive into the water? Because aisles can't swim in the water. Oh uh, yeah, good thinking, yeah. Unless they could have been easier targets. Or unless there was no water. Uh, could have been, it was just a cliff, yeah. But the think. first thing I would have done was went high speed and the fucking <laughs> I know, <water>. dive <laughs> follow like a penguin yeah. in the water. <laughs> See ya, bait boys. Honestly, I'm surprised this boy didn't actually get impaled by a tree, though. Yeah. Go on. It was, no, it wasn't, well, what, 60 foot around, so what's that? We're going to say... It reached 40 mile an hour. At least 40 miles an hour. You know. I'm like going 40 miles an hour into a tree and a car is fucking <laughs> <I know>. mad. <laughs> Never mind flying in it. Pity you didn't get a piece of it. Necromunda. Necromunda. Looney Tune physics rules. A while back when me and my buddies were all trying to get together to play Necromunda, I was reading through the rule book and telling everyone about the falling rules and giving everyone some general advice on why it's a bad idea to put your heavy on a high ledge to get a better field of fire, because he would eventually just get sniped, plummet from the catwalk he was standing on, and take some strength ridiculous hit and splatter from the fall, because falling damage is determined by the length of the fall. Then someone asked, well, what happens if they land on someone? Well, the likelihood of such a scenario occurring is so profoundly unlikely that we never find out any collateral damage rules for it. So we made up our own house rules called Looney Tune Physics. The rules for Looney Tune Physics are as follows. In the event that any model is unfortunate enough to occupy the point of impact as the falling model, the falling model will take no damage, and the model crushed by the falling model will instead take all the damage generated by the fall, as per normal falling rules, as if the model itself was the imperiled fighter. What? <laughs> so the guy it lands on. Yeah. We'll take all the damage, but the guy who actually fell take no damage. All of the damage goes into the one that That's pretty on. cool. I like that. I like that. Using, as, using someone <laughs> yeah. as a mattress, essentially. <laughs> Basically. You know, like in the Saturday morning cartoon show where a fat guy falls and lands on a skinny guy, and the fat guy's fine. Well, interesting how this worked out. Shadowrun 4th Edition. Played loose and fast with the rules, mechanically and thematically. Party has just rescued Mrs. Johnson from her kidnappers and are transporting her back in the van. 
a pair of truck-sized bipedal AI-controlled mech things start chasing them. So I, Hoobo Cop. Yeah. That's all I can think of, <laughs> just Hoobo Cop then. So I drew a rough sketch to the mechs to show their shape and relative size. We have a gun adept, an illusionist, a troll street Sam, and a James Bond wannabe edge whore. He's James Bond, so he needs cool gadgets, and has a contact who makes crazy things. At the beginning of the session, Bond requests a ring that can shatter glass. The inventor gives it to him in the form of a shoe. <laughs> 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 saying it was developed to help propel through windows. How much? The player asks. I say we'll figure that out between sessions. He's not going to find a use for it this session. So after using some illusions to trick one of the mechs, lots of gunfire and grenades, one mech is down. Bond is all, hey, how did you describe the mechs again? Well, they're this big things like this drawing with big old glass radome things. Glass? <laughs> <laughs> I bury my face in my hands as the edge whore does a throwing roll, getting 32 successes on throwing a shoe, which destroys the housing centre for the Mex's sensors, causing it to freak out on top of getting drenched in the Seattle rain and blowing up for good effect. And I told him he wouldn't find a use for it that (laughs) session. Is this like almost like reverse odd job? Instead of throwing the hat, you threw the shoe. Oh wait, no, that was an awesome power, wasn't it? Was that Austin Powers where he fucks his shit, people? I can't. The last time I watched Austin Powers, I was like seven. Well, like, like, well, I know Austin Powers came out in like what two thousand and one, maybe. Yeah, so I was like seven. Yeah, so it was a long time after this post was made. <laughs> About the same distance of time actually between <laughs> yeah. us reading this post to it coming <laughs> yeah. out. Like, never mind, never mind. Let's keep going. Hey guys, this is just a quick bit of promo. We got our website up and running and we have a massive restock on most of the models. However, one of the cool things about the website is if there's a model that you're waiting on, you can enter your email and be put on a waiting list. And it's not just good for you so then you'll know when they're restocked. We can also see what you guys are waiting on and what we should be printing. (laughs) So either way, the models are by far the best way to support this channel and to help us do videos that YouTube would find inappropriate on the platform. (laughs) Um, like, let's be serious. The models are pretty based looking, so once again, just look at the titties. Look at the lizard titties! <laughs> but anyway, let's continue on with the video. D&D 3.5 edition. Expanded crit confirmations. Action points, one per five levels. One of our party members had fallen in a big fucking hole that led to hell. Beast. <laughs> how, do, how do you even do that? How do you even do that? Who, who, who put... The who put sl- the hell pit there who, again? Who, who put the Slanashi demons in the bag of holding <laughs> for an instant blue job machine? Who decided <laughs> again. this? Again, again, again. <laughs> Literally. She was lucky ish that the portal at the bottom had completely borked the falling damage. Shoot, bort. Bort. So she didn't take damage for a two day fall. She was also my character's love interest. Wait, is this going to be like, you know, the volcano oh. in Spy Kids 2? You know when they're going down the volcano oh, yeah. and they're there for like three hours? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what it was yeah. turned into? <laughs> My paladin, dex based with a rapier, this is important in a bit, has the wizard we were working for cast a teleport spell with a delayed trigger on it to bring him and the girl home. Then he leaps into the pit after her, about 30 seconds later. She gets to the bottom five combat rounds before me and lands right in the middle of a group of three pit fiends who were bored out of their minds via the random encounter table he had drew up in case one of us fell in the fucking pit. They proceed to beat and torture her into negative HP before I get there to rescue her. Not much of a feat, as she was a wizard. She's at minus seven the round I enter the combat. I cleave and smite the two closest to me in one turn due to a triple crit, thanks to the expanded crit range of a rapier. 18 to 20 for those not in the know. <laughs> what? I just find it funny. 18 to 20 of those not in the know. <laughs> just to let you know. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes you need to add that in, you know. What what edition is he playing? 3.5. 3.5. Yeah, like it was a different time. And then threw myself between her and the last one for my move. It backhands me and takes me to 5 HP and knocks me prone. Then stands over me while donning his rape face. <laughs> <laughs> my girlfriend feels her safe. Minus H. Minus 8 HP. Oh no. no! Getting raped by the boogeyman uh, again! Not again! <laughs> Daddy's got his pee pee out again! <laughs> no! Oh dear. Then I scream, Miss Crant! Not 20. 
A vault. A vault. <laughs> oh. <laughs> of course, it's a Dex Beast Paladin. You know he's French. <laughs> Even though Wallflower's Millionaire has actually... We've done quite a few of his stories, by the way. He's got some really good ones. My next roll is an 18. Then my third is a 3. I spent my action point to re-roll and got a 19. Bitch. My character struggles up from under the demon. And you take his dick out of your hand. <laughs> <laughs> As my girlfriend feels her next save. Minus 9 HP. I'll be damned if she's gonna die here. After I leapt into hell and slew the demons. She barely passes her next save as I make it to her and put every point of my lay on hands into healing her. I pick her up as she wakes up. He came for me. I always will. <laughs> <laughs> you saved me. And nothing will ever stop me. <laughs> Why they went <laughs> <laughs> Still like Zoro. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's just, I'm getting Zoro vibes. Like, come on here, he's a pal- paladin with a leap here. <laughs> that kind of gives... Actually, would he be... Would Zoro be a Dex Beast Paladin? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, he's kind of got that... Then I kissed her full on the lips and triggered the teleport spell to get the fuck out. We're level 5 at the time. That's pretty cool. Actually, for level 5, that's... You raped her! Uh, you you murdered her! <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't help. That was, that was pretty cool, now. That was pretty cool. Um, but no, I think that's where we're going to end it. I, I quite like this thread because it felt like peering into like a time vortex almost. Like, you know, doing a thread from, what, 2010? Yeah. And like, you know, the way people talk. People's lingers and shit. Yeah, is weird. I think it's fun. But I'm te- whenever I say this thread's massive, guys, it's I mean huge. it is massive. Yeah. So if act- you like this video, we might do, do it more. again because... It's huge. <laughs> and we might actually put in a few of your guys if you have any stories yourself. Yeah, that, if you like, write them down below, we can mix match some from this one, some from your guys' ones, yeah. and make a video on it. Yeah, if that's what you're interested in, I think it would be a bit of fun. Yeah. You know, uh, we are going to be doing that uh, Eldritch Abomination one soon with yeah. your guys because we got tons. It was actually really good. I was happy for that. Yeah. And I really want to go back and do that Eldritch I've read Abom- a couple of them, but I don't want to. I don't want to read any more because I want to read them on yeah do it while we're voiceover, yeah. voicing them but no I hope you guys enjoyed this one I thought it was a bit of fun and it is like looking into like a time vortex almost yeah. of what TG used to be all the name fags yeah. is there any even name, fa- name fags left I have I've yet to, very I, few I haven't I haven't seen one in a long time the only one is Copper yeah Copper and Shoggy Shoggy they're, 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 they're the, the only, only ones that I know that have that, names yeah that still use names it's just not really a thing anymore no. is it Either way, either way, enough talking about uh, internet culture and shit like that. Hope you guys enjoy. Remember to subscribe. It really does help us out. It really helps us out. Please subscribe. Check the the notifications. Hit the bell and then you'll get notified whenever we upload. And also check our website. Because there's we got new some... models coming up every day, near yeah, enough. We've like... got, oh, we've got Lizard Tits 2's coming soon. Oh. You wait till you see oh, Lizard Tits. Oh, look at the titties! <laughs> okay, we'll end it there. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you later. Bye!